Hello, my name is Duan. I'm assistant professor at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Um, so today I'm going to talk about my papers, the TLS 1.3 in the practice and how TLS 1.3 contribute to the internet. So this paper works done with uh, Hyunwoo Lee and the Yong Kwan. So Hyunwoo Lee is postdoctor at the Purdue University and the Yong uh, Yong Kwan is a professor, assistant uh, professor at the University of Virginia. So what is the TLS? The TLS is a de facto standard network protocol that enables also security communicate over other parties over untrusted networks such as the internet. So for your information, says over today, more than 90% of internet traffic is communicated over TLS, which means that if you uh, send the messages, uh, if you exchange a message with your friends, or if you access the website, all the messages, all the communications, all um, done over the TLS uh, in the internet. So TLS looks a perfect protocol. However, we have seen uh, all the TLS versions not secure. So as you can see, that there's a lot of the a lot of the TLS vulnerabilities is discovered. So particularly, uh, particularly in the 2014, the so Google team, Google security team, discovered the Poodle attack that can explore the CVC mode padding vulnerabilities when falling uh, back to the SSL 3.0. So to improve the security and the TLS, uh, the security of the TLS and to uh, mitigate the a lot of vulnerabilities as shown here in this slide, the three, three point, TLS 1.3 has presented and also officially approved in August in 2018. So let's take a look at, briefly like, look at the new features of TLS 1.3. So in the TLS 1.3 uh, aims to improve two things. The first one is security, and the second is the performance. The particularly in the security, so the as you can see, the, as you, we discussed before in the last slide, the Poodle, you know, Poodle attack exploit the CVC mode padding vulnerability when falling back to the TLS 3.0. So to this end, the TLS 1.3 introduced the downgrade protection mechanisms, and then also TLS 1.3 introduced the certificate as extension field in the certificate messages to efficiently process the certificate related um, the TLS extensions. And then also TLS 1.3 reduced the two round trips to the one uh, uh, for the handshake down to the only one uh, round trip time. So it, so as you can see, the TLS one, the TLS 1.3 officially approved in uh, August of 2018, which means that it has been more than two years past, uh, two years in the past, and after the the TLS 1.3. Uh, officially approved. So we strongly believe that it's time to analyze uh, uh, analyze how uh, adequately the TLS 1.3 is deployed has been deployed in the wild. So in the prior work, they are the prior work mainly focused on adoption of the TLS 1.3. So even though you know new features uh, new features are presented in presented in 1.3, however, you know they mainly focus on adoption of TLS 1.3. So in this paper, we'll really want to, to take a close look at, at the implementation of TLS 1.3 deployments with three different uh, perspectives. So first one is adoption, of course, and the second thing is the security, and the third thing is the performance, because the security performance was uh, related to new features of the TLS 1.3. So to um, so, so more specifically, so we raise uh, such uh, research questions of uh, research questions. The first in the option, so we raise questions like how many websites currently support the TLS 1.3, and who leads the TLS 1.3 deployment deployment in the practice. So we want to compare the first party and the third party. So we're gonna explain what the third party and the first party in the next slide. And then also in terms of security, so we uh, want to see how we want to see the do the website. We want to we raise questions so like do the website in the wire the stable is support to the TLS 1.3. So which means that that's the website who has 
upgraded, who has upgraded already TLS 1.3, they supposed to stably support the TLS 1.3. However, we want to see, um, however, the stable F5 can be unstably support the one, TLS 1.3, such as the, sometimes they support the TLS 1.3, but some days the TLS 1.2. So we want to see the, the website stably the TLS the support the TLS 1.3. And then last research question is the performance. So the, as we discussed, uh, you know, last slide, we have a uh, last slide, the TLS 1.3 reduced the two round trip to down to one round trip. So we want to see how much performance gains to website obtained by upgrading to TLS 1.3 compared to TLS 1.2. So, and also we measure uh, the performance gains from eight different regions. So we want to compare uh, the measures that the, you know, different uh, eight different regions. And then so our difference gain is similar to across the, um, the regions. So we raise the research questions like that. Two research questions. So we, con uh, we collected the three type of data, uh, data sets. So the first one is the security parameters. The security parameters was collected uh, to understand the adoption rate and the security impacts of the you know, TLS 1.3. So we target Alexa 1 million domain. And the data set was collected from the September 2018 to December 31st of 2020. So it's uh, more than two years. And then it was around 800, 800 days in a total. So more particularly, uh, more particularly, so we accessed uh, Alex 1 million, each of Alex 1 million domains. And then we collected two hello messages in a TLS protocol. So it has client hello and server, server, uh, server hello. So, and the second data set is a handshake message. This data set was collected to analyze TLS 1.3, new features, and the performance of TLS 1.3. So, we target only 399k uh, domains that so supported the TLS, uh, TLS 1.3. So, we collected the uh, TLS 1.2 and the TLS 1.3 full handshake messages uh, from eight different regions in the six continents North America, South America, and in Asia, Australia, and uh, Africa and uh, Europe, so like that. And then the last, last question, the last, uh, last data set we collected is the data platform information to, to better understand it, understand, understand who upgrades the TLS servers uh, versions in the trend. So we categorize the two, uh, categorize TLS, uh, TLS website to two classes the based on responsibility. The first one is the first part responsibility. The website web server owners are responsible for the web servers. So for example, if you have your on the server, you have responsibility managing the server and upgrading TLS versions. And the third part responsibility is the third party have responsibility for upgrading the server and the TLS versions. So for example, you are I suppose you are web server's owner. However, you um, utilize the CDN, so the cloud servers and the cloud servers, um, the cloud servers and the CDNs, the companies are responsible to managing and upgrading these servers. So let's discuss the what you found in this paper. So take a look at the first, uh, first part is adoptions. So as you can see that, so as you can see, as you can see that there is uh, the graph, um, there is graph is a, there's a solid line. The solid line is uh, indicated is a TLS 1.3. And then this is a dot, um, the line is a TLS 1.2. So as you can see that, as you can see that TLS 1.3 is continuously increasing. It's around um, 0 0.042% uh, per day, which means they're very slightly, but in continuously increasing. However, TLS 1.2 uh, continuously de decreasing, decreasing. So the uh, data collection, data data was collected until December 31st, 2020. So at this time, um, the adoption, uh, adoption rate is almost uh, similar to here. So you can see that, as you can see that uh, almost 50% and 50%. So however, today, uh, April 2021. So uh, we presumably, presumably believe that the you know adoption rate of a TLS 1.3 is a surface a surface TLS 1.2. We believe that. So and also we measure how long it uh, take to reach you know the the 50 percent adoption rate. So you know in a TLS 1.3 it takes around 250, uh, 264 days. So here's a March April April something we found that around it reached the 50 percent uh, 
50% uh, of adoption rate. So however, in a TLS 1.2, the shift from the TLS 1.1 to TLS 1.2 needs around five years to reach the 50% adoption rate after approval days of a TLS 1.2. You can see that only less than 300, 300, year, 300 days, however, you know, TLS 1.2 is a five years. And then we want to compare the first party, the responsibility, and the first is the third party, the responsibility. You can see the red line is a total number of uh, domains, na uh, domains with uh, that that support to TS one point three. Um, is a green green uh, green uh, green line is uh, indicate the first party responsibility, and the purple line is a third party responsibility. So as you can see that all the stages. Uh, third party is a uh, main contributors, main contributors, the TLS 1.3 adoption. So, however, you know, around the, it's a March 2020 here. So, third part, uh, first party platforms account for more than 50% of session rate. And then, and then after then, so the first party, uh, first party, uh, first party responsibility platforms are uh, surpasses uh, third party responsibility platforms. So in terms of security, so we raise questions to do website in, in the wired stable support the TLS 1.3. So you can you can see that as you expected, the most of the cases upgrade from TLS 1.2 and TLS from TLS 1.2, TLS 1.3. However, we found that very small number here. However, we found that uh, from the TLS 1.0 or TRS 1.1 to TRS 1.3. So more interesting stuff here is that, you know, unstable. So unstable, we found that 90% of upgrading are unstable. So which means that, so which means that sometimes the upgrade, some part, sometimes the TLS is supported the TRS 1.3. However, another day they support the TRS 1.2. So, so the, what does, what does my, on uh, what, what, what do you, what does it mean by unstable TLS version? So instability indicated not always a guarantee to secure the benefit of TLS 1.3. So we found two uh, scenarios can cause instability. So first thing is downgraded softwares, it, it which account for 60% and average the one around 97 days. And the another case is the migration to the softwares with the lower, lower TLS versions is account for uh, forty percent around the forty percent average two hundred um two hundred eleven uh, two hundred eleven days. So and then more interesting, more interestingly, we found uh, more cases is a regional difference. This is a rare cases only it has only three hundred fifty cases. However, this is very interesting. So uh, what it case is that so for example a server utilize the CDN, the CDN is located in a different uh, continent. For example, United States and one other one is Japan or one other one is uh, Germany, for example. Um, the, however, the this CDN's version, TLS uh, versions of this CDN's has different, different. So which means that the T CDN in United States is supported the TLS 1.3. However, servers in Japan supports only TLS 1.2. So which means that people who are living in Japan who are who have the TLS lower versions, which means they are vulnerable to the vulnerable to uh, such attack that discovered previously. With that is a uh, that it was that we discovered in the last and in the first slide, right? So which means that the security of website reliance on lower the TLS versions, and that the people who are living in this area where the TLS versions lower are vulnerable to uh, such attacks. And the last last question is the performance. The performance is that we want to measure the performance gains from eight different regions. So as you can see that we measure different eight different regions. And then, so we found that uh, TLS versions can be, uh, TLS 1.3 can be beneficial to the website to which they cannot use the CDN the services. So which means the people who living in the area also far from the CDNs and the cloud services, they also obtain the performance gains. So this is a TS 1.3 is a very finish, uh, beneficial to the people who who um, the who uh, the people who living in the the further further the CDNs uh, CDNs further from the CDNs and cloud services. So here's the takeaway. The first, uh, in terms of adoption, so adoption rates are faster than previous TLS. So you can see that around 300 days to reach the 50% adoption rate is around 300 days versus the five years. 
And then the sec in terms of security, um, so around the 9% of the website uh, um, unstable support the TLS 1.3. So which means that the people are, uh, that this is not guaranteed the security features, the TLS 1.3. And then in terms of performance, and the, this is a beneficial the solvers and the people who rule the area and the solvers that do don't have, uh, they don't utilize uh, the CDN servers. And that's it. Thank you so much.